guys, in case this is the first video of mine you're going to see on the subject of being a field player, first of all, shame on you, and second of all, I guess I'll just recap. I, I do try to be a field player, and I have since the mid-80s, sometimes better than others. Um, sometimes succeed at being a field player really well, sometimes I don't, I end up falling back on you know, more like mechanical fundamentals and stuff like that. I did a video a couple of months ago, kind of defined it. What does it mean to me? To me, it basically means make sure everything feels right, not just that I'm aiming it correctly and then line for squirt and all that. Just make sure that it feels right and trust my inner pool player to put the ball in. And then the next video I did was about some of the pros and cons, some of the good things about it, such as one of the good things for me, well, a lot of times I was shooting really, really well without any pressure because I wasn't shooting, my inner pool player was, um, and also the pacing. I don't have very good concentration to be able to take my time and aim everything and concentrate and all that. Sometimes I can't do that, so this... Uh, being a field player allows me to play more quickly so I don't get distracted so easily by other things that might be going on. Uh, a con, and the biggest con, is that every time I miss, if I shoot a shot by feel and I miss, a part of my brain is going to call me an idiot and be basically like, Dave, you dumbass, why didn't you aim that shot? Why didn't you take that shot seriously? whatever and this is going to happen for every miss and it's happened to me for 40 years now almost 40 years now sometimes i can tune out that part of my brain that's being a jerk and sometimes i can't anyway this video okay how do you do it this is not how do i shoot all the time like now these are some of the things that i did to kind of train myself to be a field player back when I first started, you know, trying to do it. What I did to maybe speed up the process, I, was, I guess I was hoping. One of the very first things that I did is try to develop the attitude. You need to have the attitude that there's no such thing as a hard shot. My inner poor player did not want to hear anything about any hard shots. He wanted me, the analytical side of my brain, to butt the hell out. And my inner pool player just wants to make shots. So try to keep the attitude that shooting the seven in the side is not any easier, not any more difficult than cutting the four down there. Or cutting the eight over there. Or banking the one in here. There. Uh, banks are a bad example because inner, my inner pool player is still learning how to bank because I never did back then. But sometimes it's it's an easy attitude for me to have. And sometimes it's not. If I miss a couple shots, you know, like I said, that part of my brain starts screaming and hollering. Dave, you idiot, you should have aimed that wall. You know, I start to kind of listen to that a little bit. At least part of me starts to listen to that and doubt myself. I doubt my inner pull player's ability to do anything with me. So but the, the attitude to have is that shooting this seven was no easier. Now I'm going to miss all my shots, okay? And anything difficult I'm going to miss, I always do this on camera. Because being a field player is it's almost the opposite of talking to a camera. So, anyway. Any shot that I miss is because, well, it could be just general suckage. And, but mostly because I'm talk to the camera. I'm closer, than I, closer than I thought I should. So, keep it, maintaining that attitude, working on that attitude. You have to have that to be a field player. So, I worked on it. Another thing that I started doing pretty quickly was reducing the number of practice strokes I was taking down to one. I don't remember what I was doing, you know, before all this. Probably I was more more like a normal person and 
and you know, be sawing and wet my thumb a little bit, and make sure everything's right and all that. It was a long time ago. I don't really remember. But reduce it to one. And it's not because one practice stroke is a secret pool. It's because one practice stroke seemed to be my limit. Anything more than that, I started to feel like I was aiming the shot. And as soon as I started to feel like I was aiming the shot, my inner pool player started feeling like I didn't need him anymore. And he could just go off to the bar or whatever. So, and when I say one, what I'm talking about for one is there and then put it in. Remember I talked a little while ago about talking to the camera? That's going to happen. But I should have made that. That was straight in. Okay, so one practice drum. Now, watch me shoot now. You might see me take more than one. You're never going to see me take 115 or anything like that. But you may see me take two or three. And and that doesn't mean type in the comment, Dave, you're a liar. I saw you shoot. And I saw you take two practice strokes, you liar. No, this is what I was doing to start out. I was setting up and taking one practice stroke to force myself to not be aiming the shot. Forcing my inner pool player to realize that it's up to him to put the balls in. He doesn't have an analytical side of my brain to rely on anymore. This is what I was teaching. That the pacing and all that, it's just a matter of getting up, getting lined up. One, put the shot in. The other thing would have been. I would tend to shoot shots more authoritatively than was necessary a lot of times. I still think I do that more than maybe your average pool player. I may shoot shots harder than your average pool player. I may, well, that might be because that's, that's how I bank balls. But I would, I would much rather shoot shot like at that speed. Now shoot a shot like at that speed. What there's gonna be a whole lot of difference, but there was. In my arm I could feel it, there was quite a bit of difference. The other thing that I have talked about on, on several different videos, because it does a couple of different things, is looking at the cue ball, focusing on the cue ball. I've talked about this in the past, multi mostly in the context of it helps my concentration. If my opponent misses, and I'm walking up to the table, and I'm looking at the cue ball, I'm not being distracted by anything else. I'm not as likely to be distracted by anything else. Again, you see me watching, see me in person or something, and you, I don't, don't be typing, Dave, I saw you look at that pretty girl. This is what I was doing, start when I was starting out with this. Some nights, I do look at the cue ball almost all the time. Those typically can be, seem to be times when I don't feel like I'm concentrating otherwise. I am getting too easily distracted by pretty girls and loud restaurants and loud music and all that. But back then, all the time, I would never take my eyes off this cue ball except just glance at the other one, glance at the pocket, stuff like that. So I walk up to the table, I'm just, I'm just drilling a hole with my eyes through the cue ball. And I can get into my alignment at this point. You can see the nine in my peripheral vision. I can see the pocket in my peripheral vision as I'm doing this. Say, if I'm going to shoot, shoot the nine and get shaped for that level, in theory, right? I think I can do a one practice stroke there. I'm watching the cue ball. Even though it's still moving, I'm watching and get in, in line there. It helps the concentration. The other thing it helps, the inner pool player because there's no thinking or calculation or stuff ideally happening. Just needs all the information that he can get. Or she, if, if you're in a pool player as, as, a, as a woman. Um, all the information possible. Such as, where's the object ball? You get that from your peripheral vision. Where's the pocket? You get that from your peripheral vision. The other thing is the distance. So as, I, as I'm walking up from my, from my stool to a shot, 
I'm looking at the cue ball. And as I get into the shot line, I'm not necessarily setting a specific distance. It's probably it's probably pretty consistent, but my inner pool player knows the distance between my hips, my body, and this cue ball. If I'm in, in some kind of a stretched out situation, that distance is going to be different. I'm trying to get myself over. But I saw so look at the cue ball, come over. My inner pool player knows this distance. You don't have to get out of tape measure and measure it and all that. He knows the distance. I was trying to think if there's anything else that I, that I was doing back then. Um, that was a big thing. People would very often tell me, hey, Dad, you must be shooting really good because I haven't seen you take your eyes off the cue ball for an hour and a half. So I like, yeah, I hear that kind of stuff a lot. And they would say it enough, and I would pay attention. And I'd go, yeah, you're right. I am shooting pretty good, and I haven't taken my eye off the cue ball. So looking at it. Get in line, still see it. My inner pool player knows this distance. One practice stroke. Would have liked to have made that shot. Okay, I got a little bit too cocky trying to bank shot. My inner pool player's not know how to bank. Now, looking at the cue ball, as it comes up, really good head on the food, you see that? Does not mean. Like this. There's nothing magic about the cue ball. This probably did just help my concentration, but that's not the only reason that I'm doing that. It's about getting this distance, being able to see the object ball, being able to see the pocket, being able to see the shot line. And your pool player knows the distance that's got to happen. But there are going to be people out there that are going to be going like this. Like waiting for something magic to happen. No, there, there's, there's no magic that happens in a case like that. If, if both balls are moving, I'm bad at examples. If both balls are moving, I'm looking at this cue ball. I don't even, even know where the seven's going to stop yet, but I'm looking at this cue ball. Once the seven finally stops, I can get into the proper alignment at that point. I already know the distance. It's right there because the cue ball just happened to stop first. If the cue ball was still moving, I wasn't sure it was going to come down and bounce back for the seven. Look at the cue ball. Look at the cue ball. Look at the cue ball. My inner pool player knows this distance. And it's just a matter of, in theory, took too many practice strokes on that again. That's why I missed. I think that's probably about it. The, the whole field player concept is not nearly as complicated. As, as you know, maybe I thought it was at first, and maybe some other people might think it is. It's a lot simpler than a lot of other ways to shoot. You know, I think I said in my first video, what is a field player? What I said was, you could get one of the most mechanical and fundamentally sound players in the world. And the person I, that I was thinking of was Fetter, but I still guarantee that if Fetter comes up here and he's aiming and aiming and it doesn't feel right, that he's not going to shoot it. He's just going to reset something. Even if it's just his brain, he's going to reset something and come back and aim it and aim it. And if it feels right, then he can go ahead and shoot it. But if it didn't feel right, he still wouldn't shoot it. So all being a field player is, is I just took out all that aiming crap. Because ideally, the inner pool player doesn't need all that stuff. It's a waste of his time. And one of the other things about a lot of practice strokes, specifically, is I can be wrong. But if I'm down here long enough taking, taking practice strokes, I can convince myself that I'm right. And that's not any good. So train my inner pool player to figure out up here, get in the proper alignment up here. 
set the distance up here. Train him. Just let him know or her know. That's the way, that's the way it's got to be. Because you're not going to get down there and, and aim away and saw at your thumb and all that. You're not going to do it. A lot of times it works really well. Sometimes it doesn't work as well. But it's always fun for me. I think that's all that I wanted to say. Um, I was going to mention at the very beginning of this video that because of the, of the topic and back when I started down this little, you know, pool journey of mine, whatever, um, it was with a McDermott D12. So I'm shooting with, with a McDermott D12. And a little pro tip. So this guy's got a little pro tip on it. You know, realistically, maybe I should have picked up the Master Chalk and started shooting with it. For this video instead of the, the town pyro but i didn't feel like doing that and i didn't also didn't feel like losing 30 pounds in 35 years i thought both would probably be nice to go back to you know the way i was back then get my eyes fixed and all that crap that'd be cool but i didn't i didn't do any of that stuff either so the the retro part of this video looking at the cue ball is it's a D12 and it's a little pro tip and that's what it is and I guess that's all I'm going to say about it you know just like always if anybody has any questions ask you know I never want to be the, one of those guys that's like leave your questions in the comments below but where else are you going to put it you know um, if you have any questions ask away if you have something derogatory to say Go someplace else and do it, because my channel is not the place for crap like that. If you disagree with any, anything I ever say, you can say, I disagree. I respectfully disagree, but not, you are an idiot. I don't want to hear stuff like that. I don't want to read stuff like that. That's it. Bye, guys.